So we got a really good question from one of you guys about over communication in marriage. Yeah. Can you actually talk too much or we as we've been doing some research and reading, you can actually like more communication, more talking doesn't always equal a reconciliation. It doesn't always mean that things will work out. Uh, mm. So we're going to kind of check that out, see if too much talking just leads to frustration or if it usually leads to one of us withdrawing, right? And so where does it come from? Why why does somebody just feel the need to just da, 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 like all the time? And how do we know if we're an over communicator? How do we know if our spouse is and they're not just being annoying? Um, and then what do we do with it? <laughs> what do we do with it? We all have annoying moments. Let's just be honest. So we are going to talk about that on the other side. I never annoy Ryan. He is always annoying to me. <laughs> I'm kidding. I was going to say he's is. always annoyed by me. There it is. There you is. have it. That's the hot take, folks. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, over communication. You use the you said if someone's just like that 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 it reminds me so when we were in switzerland this is, this is gonna sound crazy there was a lady if you, if you don't know our story excuse me we were in switzerland right after we graduated from college we got this married like in 10 college 10 years 15 years, 15 years ago, ago almost yeah and i got put in the hospital i was really sick buy the book fierce marriage if you want to know that story or make it pay for it <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding i had a heart thing and it almost killed me and i was in the hospital and this I was sharing a, a room with a with an elderly man. Mm-hmm. His wife would come in, and that just reminded me of that <laughs> wife because just da, 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 there was this. It was a Swiss German, yeah. And so it was this kind of has this like swing. If you know what Swiss German sounds like, you know what I'm talking about. But it's got kind of like the swing to it, yeah. And she just would not stop talking for hours. Yeah, just da 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 da. da, da. And, and I was literally losing and... my mind. <laughs> Well, and his, her husband too was just like, oh yeah, oh yo, oh, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. That's all he would say, <laughs> which is that he's obviously agreeing. He's just kind of like being a good husband or whatever. But yeah, but that's what comes to mind. Is he being a good husband? There's another type of overcommunication though. It's it's where you divulge too many unnecessary details, right? Where you sure. are, if you ask somebody, "Hey, how was your day?" and all of a sudden they launch into a whole diatribe about how traffic, like every step of the traffic mm-hmm. journey that they took, and every little detail, minute detail of or detail, excuse me, of their interactions with people they're not reading the room in that moment mm-hmm. i didn't ask about every detail of your day i didn't need i don't need your life story <laughs> yeah, what i need to know is how are you doing as a person <laughs> that's what I need sometimes to know. people they tell all that to illustrate what how they're actually doing but we're going to talk about that they're, that. they're lonely <laughs> that's what they're maybe really, just being uh, well, and the Lord asks us to love lonely people and to be kind to them right and patient so we've been on this communication so how do we deal with it yes that's good. Thank you for that. Uh, we're on this communication theme in our lives, and up there, in therefore, our lives. <laughs> therefore, on on the, the the channel on the podcast. And so, this is going to be another step in that journey. It's like it, we've talked about in, engaging a spouse who is disengaged. We've talked about uh, 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 what is it? Miscommunication. Ways to avoid miscommunication. Mm-hmm. What if you have one who's a talker, one who's not a talker? How do you bridge these various gaps in communication? Well, in this case, you need a little bit of communication space. <laughs> Like okay. If one's a talker, one's not. There's a gap. Well, and there's it's more than there. just a talker, which we'll define in a little bit. Okay. But in case you don't know who we are, this is my husband Ryan. I'm Selena Frederick. We are the fierce people behind <laughs> fierce everything. One day, <laughs> one day we'll we'll figure out exactly what what we are. Uh, uh, we are the faces, the voices behind yeah. fierce marriage, fierce families, um, fierce parenting. So if you want to partner with us, you love what we do, you want to support and get behind the message and lock arms with us, uh, you can go to fiercemarriage.com slash partner. If you could subscribe, rate, like, review, share, uh, you know, whatever it is that everybody's doing to say <laughs> that you like something and it's good and everybody else should listen to it too, do that for us. That helps yeah. us out a lot. I will say we've had a new influx of uh, patrons over the last few weeks. I can't tell you how encouraging that Praise is to the us. the Lord, yes. We've said this before, but our patrons are the reason that we're still here. Like, yeah. We, we we sell books. That's kind of the bread and butter. But books don't always sell on their own. And there's a huge kind of amount of complexity that goes around getting those books out to the market. Mm-hmm. And our patrons are kind of like that bedrock of this ministry. So mm-hmm. thank you. Mm-hmm. You're putting you're putting hope in our hearts and food on our tables. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hope in our hearts and food in our bellies. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I do I do sincerely mean that. Um, so thank you. And if you do want to partner, like Selena said, go to fiercemarriage.com slash partner. So questions like, can we over communicate in our marriage? Is it a problem? Why would it even be a problem? Uh, shouldn't you be able to just kind of be yourself and be free and open with how you talk, when you talk, what you yeah. say all the time, right? Can't we just can't we just all be friends and live in that freedom? Well, 
Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you over talk, we're not going to be friends. We're not going to listen. Well, I just where. Anyways, we'll get to that. Everybody's got we'll that person that. in their life that you, you want to talk to them, but you don't want to start a conversation because you don't just not know sure that when you it's have end. 20 minutes to spend, <laughs> right? And you love them. Yeah. But what if you're married to that person? <laughs> and you're like. Well, it's not like they, I don't know that they all of a sudden changed to be like that. Is this, I mean, right. how long into your marriage have we... So it's funny. <laughs> Just our, asking questions at here. Our chur- in our church gathering, we have a close dear friend, and um, we'll get into conversations, and we'll be talking... And he knows, and his wife knows, that he is prone to just continue <laughs> talking. He's not rambling, because what he's saying is good and right and true and deep and thoughtful, and yeah. he just has a lot to say. And so his wife will come up and give him a kiss while he's talking to the other men. And That's their like, code. That's like the kiss of, we're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> like, with or without you, husband. Yep, we're going. It's the kids time are getting to in go. The car. It's we time are leaving. to go. And it's been, it become a bit of a running joke. But I think the point is we all have those folks in our lives that uh, are, are long-winded. However, that's different from being maybe an over-communicator where you're not – you're being long-winded, but it's just – It's from a different place, you know, I think. And, yeah, and could be more construed as a waste of time. Right. <laughs> so, so over-communication is to communicate yeah. excessively, which feels redundant in itself and a little excessive in itself. But um, – why I think the important thing is for us to look at why. Why might our spouse or why might we hmm, feel the need to over communicate? Um, you said this first first off when we were talking was just maybe they're just a, an unclear communicator. Their thoughts are kind of jumbled. This is me, I feel like. I, they talk more. So talking more feels as if it's like clarifying over the communicating for the over communicating spouse. Like you feel like. So I don't necessarily, I don't think I over communicate, but when I talk, if I'm not careful, I will consistently double back on the things that I've said because I forgot that I didn't qualify it with some other thing. <laughs> right. And so it ends up being this really kind of series of false starts. And I frustrate myself <laughs> with that. And by God's grace, I'm learning to be more aware of that. And that's what I mean by unclear communicator. Mm-hmm. You, you may not, and you may be long winded and over communicating because you don't really know what you think. Yeah. And that's what I mean. Sometimes I don't really know yeah. what I think about something. And so talking about it, it's a bit of that Michael Scott moment, you know. We both were looking at each other like, I think you're the over communicator. I think you're in. It was just kind of, it's kind of funny to. Well, the next one I think is where you came up because it's anxious. So you're not an anxious person. And this why it came up is because it makes me anxious when you over communicate. <laughs> well, and that's will one do of the things is. Is she will kind of go through the, her to-do list as a way of expressing to me that she's busy. This is what you said, that you've that got a I lot have to things do. to do. And instead, I just need to ask him. But I'm trying to give him an opportunity to be generous and say, hey, why don't I do that for you? I had a perfect text but, last night because you were at women's <laughs> Bible study last night. And I was out in the shop doing some work on the weed whacker because it's not working. The little <laughs> farm mechanic hat on. <laughs> and uh, I get a text from you. You had gone with a friend. Do take care of the chickens, you know, put the we have small chickens and big chickens, put the small ones here, put the big ones here, give them food, water, all that kind of stuff and put the dogs away and, uh, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And at the end, so all that's very clear. And I'm, yes, I can do A, B, C, D, and E, <laughs> to-do list, check it off, done, hero of the night, I win. And then at the end, she's like, it would also be, it'd be really nice if the dishes were done. <laughs> I feel like I'm asking a lot, and, and, I'm and like, so that's and I'm my like, thing. Where yes, I'm like, it would I don't be really nice like, if the dishes were done. <laughs> I just need to add on there, do the dishes. But I, for some reason, I felt like I was asking a lot, and so I just wanted to. If the kids get, I never know what kind of so like how much patience how he has for the evening, and so I don't want to pile it on. I never know. I'm just, but I I'm just want to. Yeah, I want to let bomb. you know that if you have time and you feel strong yeah. about it, like please do the dishes. And the reason why that's a relevant example is because you'll go around and you'll be like oh, i need to do the chickens i need to do and you're saying it out loud right it's not an ang- it okay stop for a second okay <laughs> when we're saying it comes from a place of anxiety i'm not an anxious person okay cyclical communication of every single like unnecessary detail or the person may get just they obsess and they get hung up sure. on certain details of an unresolved like minor issue like did we leave the sto- stove on or you had an example that your dad once he took a rock from like a national park or something. Oh yeah, and he was just obsessing about it because he thought somebody saw him and was going to turn him in. Well, now everybody's going to know. I'm just kidding, but they don't You'll know, never what, know which which, which rock it was. <laughs> Prove it. Hearsay. So and he, he, he he'd call he texted me he'd call me. Do you think they're gonna like? Do you think I'm gonna get in trouble? <laughs> and I'm like, Dad, 
these these parks are understaffed. They're not. No, they're not looking at rocks like this. No, don't take rocks. Don't take rocks though. From national don't parks, be like people. That. <laughs> Everybody did it. We'd have no more parks. Okay. So the first reason why a spouse might be an overcommunicator that we talked about is because they are an unclear communicator. Their thoughts no. are kind of jumbled. They're doubling back. They're not actually. They don't have tools to actually talk about what should happen in a certain order um they might be anxious and just kind of obsessive about certain Mm. things Uh, again there's tools and ways to overcome this Uh, insecure they might be trying to overcompensate for a lack of knowledge Uh, talking around the subject and how much you know about the subject or whatever you're talking about but not actually talking to the problem or what it is and they just may not like silence like maybe it just makes them feel uncomfortable and so they just kind of got to fill the air with, oh, yeah, you know, we, yeah. I went fishing once. It was this and this and this. And then it just keeps going and going and then they just don't stop. And so. I think the next one is is especially relevant if they're unaware. Yeah. So you might be unaware that you simply don't have a clue that you're doing it. Which is so hard. Which uh, if you're married to someone like that, then you could be doing uh, them a grace by saying, let's have a talk about talking. <laughs> Let me talk to you yeah. about talking now. Um. <laughs> Yeah, and then another one is easiness. It's it's easy or it's lazy. They know about it. It's their tendency. It's their habit. They're mm-hmm. comfortable talking. They don't really have a sense of well. They just don't care to like again being able to read the room. Div- be like, listen, yeah. you've been talking too long. It's time to. Well, they uh, just don't want to. Don't care. Take the time to develop any skills or tools uh, and how to grow in that way. That could really bless their spouse and could bless the Lord. Yeah. Um, and the Bible gives us wisdom in this area. We have Proverbs nineteen ten, mm. um, thirteen two. A couple of proverbs here. When the words are many, transgression is not lacking, but whoever restrains his lips is prudent. Wow. Proverbs um, thirteen two is from the fruit of his mouth a man eats. What is good, but the desire of the treacherous is for violence. 13.3, whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. He who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. Opens wide his lips. Mm. This is Proverbs 17.27. I think this is relevant especially. Whoever restrains his words has knowledge, Mm. and he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. I'm going to write that on the wall. I'm going to get one of those Etsy things made of that first. <laughs> uh, when he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. Um, I'm going to skip down to Colossians. I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes 10, 12 through 14. The words of a wise man's mouth win him favor, but the lips of a fool consume him. Hmm. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness, and the end of his talk is evil madness. A fool multiplies words, though no man knows what is to be, and who can tell him what will be after him? Here, get some wisdom from Paul, Colossians 4, 6. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Mm. Notice how it's seasoned with salt, not, not salt. covered with salt. Covered with salt. Yeah, like our, our oldest likes to put salt on the eggs in the morning, and if I'm not careful. You should just put a whole handful on them. <laughs> put a whole handful, and then you're well, she, just crunching she, salt with your eggs. She's learned that lesson, <laughs> thankfully, but yeah. Yeah, so it's there's there. I think the theme in scripture is that words matter. I think that's clear. We've yeah. made that clear over the past few episodes. Words are important. They have meaning. They carry meaning. The content of the words is really important, but also the intent behind the words and the quantity, the <laughs> quantity of the words. Yeah, it can almost be a lack of impulse control too. You see this in kids a lot. They just kind of blurt out whatever they're saying or, or thinking. Um, and instead of kind of developing self-control and asking the Holy Spirit to teach mm. you or to soften your spouse's heart to maybe exercise and learn control, self-control in this area, um, it's just kind of been ignored. And so no doubt the other spouse who is receiving all of the communication is probably feeling a number of things, which we've listed out here. It can be very emotionally draining Um to a spouse to just hear this constant narration or whatever of what's happening. Um, And most, if not all of these, just lead to silence and lead to withdrawal. So it's just a fire hose. Well, and because it it causes, you know, uh, anxiety, Mm -hmm. it it makes the relationship just feel... Strained. Yeah, it just feels strained when there's not um, just... It it takes away peace, right? A sense of peace, and that brings on the anxiety. Uh, another, if, if your spouse is an overcommunicator, you might feel overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Another way, another way people can feel if they are just being overrun, because part of being like an overcommunicator, sometimes there's this kind of aggression that comes with your communication, like you're just always intense and all of that. And so mm-hmm. a, a spouse can yeah. really feel like they're just being run over all the time, and again, leading to withdraw, to want silence, to want to just get away, um, to to 
enable yeah. and just do whatever it is to get away from uh, the over communication. On that note, we we uh, mentioned an article that Zena, who what used to be our editor, wrote for us on the marriage side yeah. about how her husband would be waiting to say something, <laughs> or no, she she would ask him a question and he would be thinking. And while he's thinking, she would just fill in the blanks, like fill in the gaps. Or you're probably thinking this, that, and the other, or, oh, I know, but that tends to, it, it removes the ability for you to articulate yourself. If someone's already articulating for you, even if you agree with the sentiment of what they're saying, you're not able to put your own words to it. Yeah. There's so much wisdom in just waiting for someone to say it how they're going to say it. Yeah. And I think being patient and remembering that you mm. love your spouse and you love what they yeah. have to say hopefully, <laughs> most of the time. Yeah. But if you don't give them that time and space, uh, and if they aren't careful, if you aren't careful with your words, it can just be this mm -hmm. noise all the time, right? Yeah. So what do you do if you are the over-communicator? I don't know. What, what do you do? do, you do? <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Uh, so if you're the one that's prone to over-communicating, it's this timeless James 119 mm -hmm. passage is being slow to... Speak. speak quick to listen you be filled quick in. to laugh you articulated listen. the thing that i was going to respond gonna slowly it's always yeah. good to respond slowly yeah be quick to listen be slow to speak slow to become angry try to see the big picture okay so if you are the spouse that is over communicative <laughs> and your spouse is saying honey we need to talk because i i i can't we can't do this all for the rest of our lives don't see it as a personal attack okay it's a way that, see it as a way, as an opportunity for you to be able to grow. See it as a way for you to be able to love your spouse well, for you to be able to uh, glorify the Lord in this process of learning how, learning self-control with our words um, and even our actions. And mm. it, again, it kind of goes back to that impulse control of just because you want to express something, uh, it doesn't mean that your spouse always needs to hear it. Yeah, not all ideas are of equal merit, right? Even if their their idea is like stream of consciousness type right, of ideas, like right. they don't need necessarily to be articulated. And if words are as important as Scripture says, we are compelled to think carefully about yeah. the words that we let come out of our mouths. Um, and if we care for the others around us, we'll be compelled to think very carefully about the words that come out of our mouths. Right, so, and I think yeah. it, as you said something too. It's it is good to care about your spouse and to care about. Mm. Wow, I don't. I'm picking up on some they're not reading the room well. Like, or I, I'm picking up on some of these things. It's not that you need to acquiesce and please everybody around you, but I think it is, you're being kind. You're being, ser you're serving one another. You're mm. bearing with one another in some ways by zipping it sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so uh, what are some of the tools that you can, you had a yeah. article you wanted to share that yeah. had just three kind of steps to really, I think they're really simple to get you started on, yeah. Well, it says three smart ways to keep yourself from rambling. So this is more geared toward maybe professional development, individual development. But this author, her name is Leah McLeod. Um, and she uh, she said this, if you're having a hard time kind of staying on point, she recommends this conversation framework. And in my research, I've, re I've quickly realized that this is very, it's a very common framework. Mm -hmm. uh, and th there are variations of it. Hers is Prez, P-R-E-S. Mm -hmm. I've seen other ones, which is PREP, P-R-E-P, but here are the, it's an acronym. The first one is POINT, so begin with whatever the key point is. You know, now, if you're in conversation with your spouse, you don't always have to have a four-point <laughs> presentation, but presentation it's just a mental note to be able to go through. It's a tool that's equipping you yeah. to have a conversation well. So have that point in mind, okay? Uh, we recently got one of those lily pad things for playing on the lake. You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? It's foam. Found yeah, a really the foam good priced floaty one. pads, yeah. And the kids love it because you can stand on it, but it kind of sinks It just like too. wiggles around and sinks. And, and so here's an example of this point, okay? Here's the point I'm trying to make. We should get one of those lily pad things. That's the <laughs> point, okay? The R in P-R-E-S is reason because the kids would love it, mm -hmm. right? That's the reason. Right. Here's an example. Do you remember the last time we were at the lake and they were playing on that floaty thing, but it was too small? And it wouldn't stay attached. <laughs> and it wouldn't stay attached. <laughs> Kept to floating the, away. Uh, this isn't like that. This is better than that. Therefore, summary, which is the S, we should get one of those lily pad things <laughs> because our kids will love it, right? And that's a really clear example, but uh, and it's really kind of silly. But think about anytime you're having a conversation, it, what's the point of it? Okay, you're talking maybe logistics. You don't necessarily have to pitch your, your spouse on logistics, but just to find clarity in your stream of thought and then being 
mindful of every every single word that comes out of your mouth. Um, I think can be really helpful. And part of this article as well, it mentions that embracing like the the pause, stop, gather your thoughts, think of what that point is, and then carefully say it. Yeah, that's okay. Um, and that's that's good. And you're doing your spouse a service in doing that. You're serving them well by communicating efficiently and clearly. Um, so how do we respond? If uh, so, we've talked about if you are married to. No, Excuse what me. what do you do if you are the over communicator? Okay, yeah, what do you do if you're the over communicator and your spouse you, comes to you? Okay. How can you respond to them? But how should the spouse okay. of the over communicator respond? Cool. So first things first, determine if this is an actual issue or if you're just annoyed, right? Like how how do you do this? You go through the reasons why that we listed above. You know, maybe they're just maybe they're They've got some anxiety. Maybe they're just really terrible communicators. Mm. So they just circle, circle around. Um, Go through those and figure out maybe what the motivation or the why behind the what, right? Um, And is it a consistent pattern? Is it how they communicate about everything? I think that's the key. Yeah. Um, The second thing you can do to respond to an over-communicative spouse, uh, be their helper. Yeah. And this is going to cash in a lot of those deposits that you've made, right? If you're coming at them, you've been married 10 years and you're saying, been mean to tell you something well, ever since I've known you. <laughs> no, that I don't like that phrase because then it's just like it's partly your fault if you haven't said anything to me. And in that case, you could, as a spouse, say, I haven't wanted to bring this up because I was afraid that it would somehow hurt your feelings or I didn't know how to t- say it. <laughs> but I can't deal with it anymore. I can't just take it anymore. <laughs> yeah, and so no, you, you come alongside them and yeah. say, I want to help you in this because I feel like this is an area where uh, you can grow. Of course, they would hopefully not respond defensively. Remember well, what again, we talked about yes. at the top. Like it's not a personal attack. Yes. Yeah, see the big picture. This Try is a see. way we can grow. Yeah. Our po- one. Why are we married? Right. We're married. Yes, to enjoy one another, but it's for God's glory and it's for our own sanctification. And so, part mm. of being sanctified is, oof, some of those spots that we don't like, we don't want to hear about because we think we're great right. in it. Um, we need to be told. We need to be shown. And yeah. that is a loving thing to do. So as the spouse, be a helper to them. How? In your language, in your tone, and in your actions. And by language, I mean yeah. ask clarifying questions. Um, provide examples of when this has happened. And I mean, it could be just every day. But I think examples are helpful to the person who you're telling them that they have a communication issue um (laughs) avoid the you always never statements right Um, use i statements and go on that journey with them just in how you talk to them also your body language so making eye contact with them not being on your phone um facing them maybe even holding their hands and and showing them love and consideration uh, and grace with how you you know use your body uh tone tone is big tone is huge be full of kindness Yep. Uh, action uh, is would be the next piece where you can come alongside them and say, okay, well, how can we, can I give you a kiss on the cheek when it's time to go? So that you know <laughs> that you're being, you know, you're long winded. It's true. Um, One, sorry, before you go to action, which I think is good, the tone is so big because it, it will either come across as being accusatory and policing, um, which is what we're trying to avoid, right? We want our tone to be full of kindness, full of grace, full of I too am a sinner, yeah. saved by grace. Not that over communicate. I, I do think it's foolish to have so many words, right? But is it a sin? It depends on the heart. Yeah. So obviously let's let's get down to the heart issues. Mm-hmm. Okay? So what, what goes through your head when <laughs> I ask you a question? Why are you the way? <laughs> Why are you It's the hard way to you ask are? those without sounding, without being combative or so yeah i mean that may be a really helpful thing and took us this long to get there but what if your spouse is going on one of these kind of you know droning on about stuff that you clearly don't need to know or care about you just want them to get to the point (laughs) you can say what is going through your heart right now and in your head do you i'm asking you honestly do you think i need to know this stuff (laughs) do you care this deeply about what you're saying that you want to express yourself to me not just this idea but yourself not all ideas deserve equal time and merit. Right. right. And not all words deserve equal airspace. Well, and the over And it's okay to emphasize that or to at least bring that up in those moments and say, okay, in your heart, you are expressing this to this degree. Why? Well, I guess it's because I feel like I, you, when I do that, you, you see me as competent, that I know this much about everything. Yeah. And that takes or, some vulnerability and some yeah. maturity. 
but the person also who is being who is the over communicator can also pause right and get curious about how did i even get to this point like why did while the, while whoever the spouse is asking like why do you feel the need to communicate all of these things? Yeah, as a kid, I never had a voice. And now that I have, a, that I'm married, you're trapped and you can't leave and you have a voice. <laughs> Your voice, all the time. <laughs> uh, but we're joking, but it's those types of things that get to the root of, okay, why do I feel the need to spend a thousand words on something that would take 50 words? Yeah. And that's, I think, really helpful. But it does take some time, some work, some introspection, and some honesty, and some vulnerability. Yeah, it takes time to develop those tools and skills to be able to communicate well. So yeah. as a spouse of the over-communicator, be a helper in how you, mm. uh, in your language, your tone, and your actions by coming alongside them. Be loving. Remember, we all have struggles. We are all flawed. We all have, mm. we, we are all awaiting our Savior's yeah. return, right? And so let us be found loving one another, bearing with one another in love, and building each other up in the things of Christ. Yeah, uh, finally, we have a helper in this. So we're talking about how can you help your spouse, uh, but you, you can't do it alone, and they need the Holy Spirit as well. Mm-hmm. As, again, this is tricky because we're not trying to say that if you talk too much, you're, you sin a lot. Like, that's not what we're trying to say. That's not something that's scriptural. We do know that words matter, and we know that words should be weighed carefully, namely words that have to do with you know, deeper subjects, right? Mm-hmm. Not talking about grocery lists. I'm and talking about teachers will be held accountable. Teachers will be, you know, yeah. And so, let's ask the Holy Spirit. Let's don't, not forget, like we are Christians. We mm-hmm. are indwelled with the Holy Spirit. We are transformed daily by Him. Yeah, He is at work in us, and the way He will work between us is through us, right? Mm-hmm. So as I talk to you, He is working right. through me in you, and vice versa. And so, don't forget that. And so, yeah. pray on your own pray together if yeah. you've it, it helps once you've kind of broken the ice on this topic and you said okay this is something we're all aware of yeah ideally your spouse would say you know what, you're right i kind of yeah. knew that but i didn't really know how to that might take some and then time they go off on some long thing telling you why they didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you uh you can help them in that and say okay let's pray stop talking let's pray <laughs> and, i'm gonna pray <laughs> and, and, yeah, and, yeah i'm gonna pray because <laughs> it's midnight and we need to go to bed um yeah so and then that's that, that's got to be your heart orientation is that you mm-hmm. can't do this alone. And yeah. in fact, that's the whole heart orientation behind fierce marriage. And the whole reason we do what we do is mm-hmm. that marriage is not easy. And, but with Christ, with Christ following his covenantal path for marriage, it can be wonderful mm-hmm. and you can flourish in that. And if you've been listening to us, you got a sense that we are Bible believing Christians. We've read scripture, but we do that because we believe it's authoritative. It changes our hearts. The Holy Spirit changes our hearts mm-hmm. and, and brings us into the kingdom of God. If you want to be a part of that family, we've set up a website just for you. It's thenewsisgood.com and it has information on what it means to be a Christian. If you already are a Christian and you know somebody in your life who doesn't really know the details mm-hmm. of what it means or how to walk that path, this is an easy way for you to show them, to introduce them to what you believe and to invite them into uh, belief themselves and mm-hmm. tr- placing their trust in Christ. So we want to call you brother. We want to call you sister in Christ. And uh, we look forward to meeting you someday on this side of eternity or the other. But uh, so, yeah, the news is good.com. That's just for you. Check that out. Um, let's pray. Okay, go ahead. Lord, I thank you for <laughs> um, the spouses that are listening to this, watching this. I pray that you would give them wisdom as they navigate the sometimes tricky waters Mm -hmm. of communication in marriage. I pray that you'd give them supernatural wisdom and discernment in the words that they choose as they they navigate, um, whether they're the over-communicator or whether they are married to one. And I pray that all this would be done in charity, uh, Mm -hmm. with grace and with love, that it would be driven by the the desire to be closely connected in new ways. Mm. Lord, I pray that that you would purify hearts as as they pursue these hard conversations so that you might be glorified and we might uh, be made better. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, once again, just a quick thank you to our Mm -hmm. Patreon supporters. Uh, We couldn't do this without you. If you want to find out what it means to become one of those, it's the few, the proud, the elite. (laughs) FierceMarriage.com slash partner. That will redirect you right where you need to go. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in there. But with that, this episode of Fierce Marriage is... We can. We'll see you again in seven days. Until next time. Stay fierce.